International Silver Company presents The Silver Theater. Starring Joan Crawford in Train Ride, directed by Conrad Nagel. Brought to you on behalf of two of the greatest names in silverware. International Sterling, world-famous solid silver, and 1847 Rogers Brothers, America's finest silver plate. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Conrad Nagel greeting you from the stage of the Silver Theater in Hollywood and bringing you the 32nd in our new series of dramatic productions. Next week, our star will be Douglas Fairbanks, Jr., and following that, the two broadcasts which will conclude our present series will star Miss Helen Hayes. But now for today's play. The house lights dim and the silver curtain rises on the opening act of Train Ride, a drama written especially for Joan Crawford by Charles Martin. It's 30 minutes toward midnight as a little train chugs its way through a mountain state. In the last car, seated a group of men, faces grim, sober, brave. Hey, Conductor, how long before we get to Brinkville? Oh, 20 minutes yet. You, uh, gentlemen going up there to watch Bill Everhart go to the chair? Yeah. Look out the window, boys. Full moon, clear sky. Mm, what a night for a man to die. What's a man think about when he knows he's got to leave all that? Mm, he's leaving much more than the moon and the sky. He's leaving a girl. Somehow I don't believe in capital punishment. I don't think it's ever right to murder back. Listen, you're a witness, not a philosopher. Yeah, but he was such a nice young fellow. He murdered for love. There wasn't anything dirty about it. Did they hear of a clean murder? If he was in love with the girl, there were other ways of getting what he wanted. Yeah, wait a minute, boys. That's the girl coming into this car. What girl? The sweetheart. Well, what's she doing on this train? She's entitled to say goodbye, ain't she? Yeah, but he won't say goodbye. He won't even see her. Huh. I wonder what she's up to. Well, she'll Newspapers, try to see him. Apples, you can take candy. a bet on that. Newspapers, apples, candy. Newspaper lady, execution extra, just out. No, thank you. Say, ain't you Mary Crane? Well? The picture's on the front page of this paper. Want to buy one? No, no, I don't want a paper. Say, it says here how you're going to watch your sweetheart die. Special pass from the warden. Can I have your signature in my autograph book? Please, please go away. Oh, sorry, lady. Didn't mean to hurt your feelings. Newspapers... Apple, candy, newspapers, apple, candy. Mary, I am your soul. Your soul is life. And you have life, yes? What do you want? Why are you letting him die? Well, how can I stop it? He's still alive, isn't he? He's still a part of your sun and your moon. Keep the moon from going down. The sun from coming up. The earth from turning round. How can I stop the earth? Make him tell. The earth will stop once he tells. Oh, but I've I... tried, I've tried. Shh, quiet. Don't lose control. Father Malone is on this train. He's coming in this car now. Be careful, Mary. Hello, Mary. Hello, Father Malone. Bill's asked the warden if he could have me by his side instead of the prison chaplain. Mind if I sit down, oh, will you? Please do. Lie. Life is truth. Cling to life. Oh, I've tried to, and it doesn't help. What doesn't help, Mary? Oh, Father, my head, it's it's pounding so. Oh. Lean back, Mary. Shut your eyes. Say a prayer with me. Father, I've got something to tell you. What is it, Mary? Bill's innocent. Bill's what? Bill's innocent. He didn't commit the murder. How do you know? Oh, I know. Have you told anyone about this? I've told everyone, and no one will believe me. Tell me, Mary. I'll believe you. Everything's so black and hazy as if it happened so long ago, and yet... Yet it was only yesterday. Or was it a thousand years ago? The telephone bell. The electric railroad. Hello? Hello. Is this Mrs. Crane? Yes. You're a lonely soul, aren't you? Who is this? No one you know. Then what do you want? I'm a lonely soul, too. Who is this? Well, about a month ago, our wires crossed. I dialed a number and got you by accident. Do you recall it? No, I don't. I do. And that's just the point. 
I loved your voice, and I wanted to hear it again. You see, it's been... Well, it's been like a lost chord vibrating in my memory. Please let me telephone you occasionally and talk to you. Look, I stopped playing games when I was ten. <laughs> How tragic. Goodbye. Oh, wait, don't hang up, please. Operator, this is 3206. I want this number changed. <laughs> Hello? Hello, Mrs. Crane. Who is this? This is your telephone friend. How did you get my new number? I just had it changed. Change it as often as you like. I'll still get it. Well, what in the world do you want and who are you? I told you I'm no one you know. Haven't you ever wanted to talk to somebody about the little problems that wage war on your life? The little, little problems that become psychological monsters. Didn't you ever yearn for somebody you could talk to whom you didn't have to see? Vision sometimes makes friendship very dull. You know, I think you're crazy. Or sane, depending on which side of the fence you look at me. If you were to meet me, which you never will, you'd think me quite sane indeed. Oh, would I? Oh, I'm sure of it. After all, Beethoven was in love for 20 years with a woman he hadn't seen. <laughs> look, mister, why don't you write a book on the technique of telephone pickups? I'm not really an authority on the subject. Listen, you are miserable, aren't you? Am I? Yes, terribly. One of the cruelest forms of torture is a woman married to a man she doesn't love. We've got it down to a fine science in America. 30% of the wives are just like you. Oh, I know who you are now. You take surveys on unhappy marriages. Well, go away. I don't want any. I'm afraid you've already got one. How do you know so much about me? You have a very revealing voice. Look, will you pick on somebody else? <laughs> What about it? In the spring, a young man's fancy turns to thoughts of solace. <laughs> Listen, Mr. Solace Dispenser, put it up in bottles and go away. Look, I could never involve your life. Hang up your phone and I am out of it. <laughs> you certainly are. Hello, Mrs. Crane? Hello. Why are you crying? What's the matter? Nothing. Haven't you got anybody you can talk to? Your husband? He hasn't the time. Talking is a medicine for sick souls. I'll listen. I can't talk to someone I don't know. Why not try getting acquainted? I still promise never to see you. Hello, Mary. Hello, Bill. Darling, have you looked out of your window? Oh, better than that, I've been out in the park. Oh, I love falling snow. I hope some children make a snowman. It was wonderful. I'm so glad. Well, you should be. It was your suggestion. Isn't it strange how someone I've never seen can be so vital a part of my life? For six months, you hung up on me. Well, and for the next six months, I'll apologize. <laughs> I should apologize for not having been more persuasive. Now tell me, what do you plan doing today? Oh, I've got to have dinner with my husband and a friend. A friend? Mm, a friend of my husband. Bill... Bill, will, will I die without ever seeing you? Will I never know what you're like? Each of us has an illusion. Why destroy it for the other? Now look, let's make a pact. When I'm ready to die, or you are, one of us will call the other and say, look, I'm going to die. I must see you. <laughs> I'm afraid that won't be for a long, long time. Oh, good evening, Mary. Oh, uh, <laughs> yes. Finish your conversation, Mary. Don't let me disturb you. I'll say good night. Yes, good night. Who was that, Mary? Uh, you wouldn't be interested. Who was that, Mary? I, I, I don't really know. You expect me to believe that? I don't expect you to believe anything I say. Well, I can't believe you talked to somebody you didn't know. I talked to you. I don't know you. We're strangers, Henry. We've grown away from each other. You've forgotten how desperately I need affection. For five years, I've been so hideously alone. Well, I've been busy trying to take the world by the horns. Oh, that's too big a world. Mine's so much smaller. Henry, when I was a very little girl, I wanted a world of love and beauty. I wanted someone I could love and who would love me in return. Sentimental of me, wasn't it? I wanted a little house like you read about in storybooks and lots of babies. Well, I got a husband and I got a house. I also got lots of money. But no love and no babies. So I lost my world. Mary, listen. Marriage is a convenience. Nothing more than that. 
It's convenient because it gives you security and me respectability. And maybe the senatorship. You're way up in the clouds. Get down to earth and stop talking about law. Henry, I want a divorce. We haven't really been man and wife for a long time. Why go on? I told you you can't have a divorce. Now get dressed. My friend is arriving at 8 o'clock. I'm not finished talking about it. Unfortunately, you'll have to be. If you want love, go to moving pictures. Oh, you're so ugly. I've got a love letter from you in which you called me handsome. Inside you, you're hideous. Look, when Mr. Everhart comes, you'll be pleasant. He's a good speech writer, and I need him for my campaign. After he leaves, you can go to bed with a book of love stories and a box of chocolates. Well, darling, uh, this is Mr. Everhart. I'm very happy to meet you, oh. Mrs. Crane. How do you do? Henry says you're an excellent speech writer. Well, not too excellent. I'm really an electrical engineer. You sort of mixed my vocations. I drifted into politics. How interesting. I find it so. He still carries on his electrical experiments. Well, as a sort of hobby. You mean you play with trains? Oh, I love it. Sometimes I work on grimmer toys than that. Grimmer? Yes. As a matter of fact, I'm now trying to perfect a more humane method of electrocution. What on earth for? It's very useful in our civilization. Mm, of course, I don't believe in capital punishment. We electricians aren't concerned with social problems. You see, the problems of electricity are like lost cords vibrating in my memory. Uh, Mr. Crane, Washington is on the telephone. Oh, I'll take it upstairs. Uh, darling, would you mind entertaining Mr. Everhart for a moment? Certainly not. I'll be right back. You're Bill, aren't you? You're Mary. Let me look at you. Are you, you disappointed? No. No, I knew you the instant I saw you. You didn't even have to use your pet phrase about the lost cord. Maybe I did it intentionally, so that if you liked me, you'd recognize me, and if you didn't, you'd have pretended not to. Why did you start all this? I just had to, ever since I saw you two years ago. You saw me two years ago? One day in your husband's office. I was leaving, you were coming in. Bill, how about your philosophy? That vision might make our relationship dull. Ah, uh, I said sometimes. You knew on the phone you were going to see me tonight and you let me tell you all about my husband's friend. It was part of the cover-up. I'm sorry. And you broke your promise. Did I? Mm Mm-hmm. You said each of us would never try to see the other unless... unless he was ready to die. Maybe I am ready to die. (laughs) Am I that deplorable? Oh, I think you're lovely. Almost too lovely. (laughs) I see you two have been getting on. Oh, yes, quite well. Uh, Say, Bill, as uh, long as you're fooling around with inventions... Why not try something that transfers telephone voices into images? Oh, Bill, I'm so happy. These little picnics all our own with nobody else to interfere or hurt. This is my little world and you brought it back to me. Come on, darling, rest your head in my lap and look up at God's blue sky. You know, Mary, I I ran across something the other day by Walter Scott that he might have written just for us. What was it? It goes something like this. Not one in 20 marries the first love. We build statues of snow and weep to see them melt. If you look across toward that mountain over there, you'll see lots of statues of snow. Oh, they're beautiful. They'll melt soon, too. Oh, Bill, I love you so desperately. They'll melt soon. Why? The sun's shining on them. They can't last very long when summer comes on. Dearest, what's the matter with you today? You're so strange. Mary, I love you so desperately. I really didn't mean to complicate your life. Complicate it? Oh, I've only begun to know what life could be like. Mary, I can't find your world for you. But you have. There's... There's something in the in the past. Something you must know. But Bill, no matter what, the past can't touch us. It can, Mary. Oh, no, I... Something in the past. No, married? No. Have you ever been married? No, it happened... Bill, wait a minute, let me guess. You escaped from prison? No. <laughs> well, then, if you aren't married and didn't escape from prison, nothing in the world can tear us apart. Mary, once... I killed a man. I killed a man. And ran away? Yes, from everything but myself. I haven't slept for years. I asked myself, how can I live without sleep, without peace? I'll bring you peace, Bill. I'll find 
some way. What kind of way, Mary? There's only one way. That, that's why I tried to stay away from you and yet tried to be with you. So I thought of a way whereby I could see you through your husband and at night go back to the telephone and talk to you there. Mary, I told you that when I revealed myself to you, I'd be ready to die. That's why I sub- Consciously, I was working on a more humane method of electrocution. I, I knew that one day I'd be a victim of it myself. The snow's coming down the mountain up there. See it? I see it. And all those lovely statues are melting into the valley. nominate me as your candidate for senator, I promise you... Henry. Oh, good evening, Mary. I was just rehearsing my speech for tonight. Henry, I want to speak to you. Well, what do you want? I'm going away. A little vacation? No. Forever, Henry. I've found what I wanted. Bill? Yes, Bill. You'll never go away with Bill, Mary. Why do you say that? You and Bill are impossible for each other. He's not really a free man. You mean Bill is wanted for murder? Bill told you? Oh, yes, Bill told me. He told me that you knew, that you were there. Not ever since you've held it over his head. But it doesn't matter to me. We're going away just the same for as long a time as Bill can live in freedom. Bill can't live in freedom if you go away with him, Mary. Why not? Because I'll send Bill to the chair. Before we bring you Act Two of Train Ride, I wonder if I might say just a few words about impressions. Because there's hardly one of us, I think, who doesn't like to make a good impression. To be admired by our friends and neighbors. Even to be envied a little, perhaps. And one of the first things by which women judge other women is their silverware. So to you who will buy your first silver soon, I'd like to suggest sterling silver. Solid silver, through and through. That speaks eloquently of your taste and background. And your love for genuine, permanent possessions. Choose Prelude Sterling. Triumphant new creation of International Sterling's gifted silversmiths. For well, believe me, ladies and gentlemen, Prelude is a joy to behold, a delight to own. Its lines are graceful, its proportions perfect, and the cluster of roses which ornaments the pattern is carved with patient, exquisite precision. It's a pattern modern as today, and yet with that absolute rightness of design and detail that gives it the enduring beauty of great art. When you see it, when you hold one of those lustrous prelude pieces in your hand, you'll know why women who appreciate the finer things in life are sure to choose it. Sterling silver, solid silver, bearing the proud old name, International Sterling. Again, the lights are dimmed and the silver curtain rises on the second act of Train Ride, starring Joan Crawford, with Henry threatening to expose Bill's crime if she should decide to go away with him. Mary Crane has come face to face with the greatest crisis in her life. And as our scene opens... Mary! Mary! Open the door! Who is it? It's Bill! Coming up the stairs, I heard some screaming, a shot... Bill. Bill. He's dead. How, Mary? Uh, We were alone. I told him I was leaving. He said he wouldn't let me. I told him he'd have to let me. That nothing in the world was going to stop me. That you were the only thing in the world I ever wanted. And that he was standing in my way. That... Then he said I was standing in his way. That all he wanted out of life was a political career. With a divorce, he couldn't have it. Then he became vicious. Said he was going to send you to the chair. Even if I didn't go away with you, he would send you to the chair. We began fighting just like two animals. I heard words in my brain. He mustn't live. Even if I never got what I wanted, he mustn't live. Wouldn't he kill me if he lived by killing you? Operator, get me police headquarters. What are you doing? Mary, I know what it is to run away from murder. Oh, no, Bill, don't. Hello? Police headquarters. This is William Everhart. I'm at 201 Grove Avenue. I've just killed a man. 
You're the district attorney of this county. You've I'm got sorry. to listen to me. I'm sorry. He didn't do it. I'm sorry. He was trying to clear me by taking the blame. I'm sorry. He's telling a lie to save my life. I'm sorry. Your Honor, I'm sorry. how can you let this case go to trial? I'm sorry. You wouldn't let them try a man for a murder I've committed. I'm sorry. Why don't you believe me? I'm sorry. But Governor Richards. I'm they're sending him to the chair for something I did. I'm sorry. It's against all laws of justice. I'm sorry. I'm the only one who's told the truth I'm and sorry. I'm being called a liar. I'm sorry. I won't anybody in the world believe me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, there it is, Father. I tried telling the judge, the district attorney, and the governor. None of them would believe me. You believe me, don't you, Father? I believe you, Mary. How can I save him? You must make him talk. Brinkville, last stop. Brinkville, all out for Brinkville. Hello, Bill. Hello, Bill, I took the liberty of bringing somebody here to see you. I know you'll forgive me for it, but you should see her. If it's Mary, I don't want to see her. But you've got to. I'm insisting on it, Bill. Hello, Bill. There's very little time. I'm going to let you spend it with Mary. I hope you do what she wants. Bill. Bill, there's still a chance to save your life. I don't want my life, Mary. For eight years, I've been living on borrowed time. Oh, Bill, why are you doing this? Oh, should I say I love you? No, I don't need to say it. You know I love you. Should I say you're part of me? You know you're part of me. Instead, I should say that there's a sort of arithmetic to life. And when the collector comes around and adds up your good and your bad columns, you've got to pay up. You sound as if you want to die. I do, Mary. But you're going for something I did. I'm paying for something I did, Mary. If, if I choose to assume your debt as well as mine, how can you stop me? But I should be punished. For loving me, for my loving you? No, Mary. If our love was at all beautiful, live on the memory of that. That's all life is, really. A collection of memories that we store up to take with us on another journey. Take mine with you as I'll take yours with me and be thankful that we both shared a great beauty. Oh, but only for a few moments. Beauty comes only for a few moments. Beauty and ugliness, they're, they're both parts of life. We shouldn't grieve that we traded one for the other. The exchange was worth the price. I'm sorry, but it's time. Mary, they've asked me to make a last request. I haven't made one, but I'd like to now. What is it, Bill? Promise me you'll live. Bill, I don't want to live. Promise me, Mary. It's the only thing I want. I love you so, Bill. I'll promise anything. Live, Mary. Remember, live. I won't let you go. I won't let them take you. Sorry, Mrs. Crane. You'll have to stay here. No, no. He can't go without me like that. He needs me by his side even when he dies. See that she stays here. Oh, no. No, don't take him. Live, Mary. Let me go. You'll have to stay here. Let me go. Oh, Bill. 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 Warden, where is she? In there with him. She hasn't left him for the last four hours. Sitting and mumbling to him just as though he could understand what she's saying. May I open the door and see? Oh, certainly, Father. Who you down? Who killed you? What killed you? You're smiling, aren't you? Do you really think it's better? Did you know when you picked up the phone you were dying? You were dying all through our love. But you still live in my world. Even though you're dead, I know you hear me. 
Even though you're dead, I know you understand. I promised you I'd live, Bill, but I've died too. Have you got a minute? I want to tell you a story. Sorry, lady. I haven't got any money. But I don't want your money. Sorry, I don't believe in panhandlers. Lady. Lady. Have you got a minute? I want to tell you a story. I'm sorry, miss. I don't talk to strangers. Sonny. Hey, Sonny, have you got a minute? Well, sure, lady. What's the matter? I want to tell you a story. Will you believe me? Believe what? Don't you believe me? I don't know what you're talking about. Nobody will believe me. You're like all the rest. Hey, Jimmy, come here. What's the matter? Listen, keep away from her. She's a little off. She's been coming here every night for five years. Stands on the street corner asking people to believe her. Nobody knows what she means. And she don't know either. She's a poor thing. They ought to send her away. Ah, she don't hurt nobody. Ah, it's too bad. Good evening, Mary. Good evening, Father. Do you know what it is to tell the truth and not be believed? Yes, Mary. I know what it is. Do you believe me? Yes, Mary, I believe you. I've been believing you for five years. Then why won't somebody punish me? Mary, you have been punished. Just a moment, ladies and gentlemen. John Crawford will come back for a personal word with you. But first, here's a man with news that will delight and surprise you. All right, John Conti. Ladies and gentlemen, I know that all your lives, many of you have longed to own solid silver as richly lovely as International's Prelude Sterling. And now, on even a limited budget, you can. For under International Sterling's lenient budget plan, you can get a service complete for eight... 12 or 24 persons on payment terms adapted especially to your income. Or you can start a solid silver service in Prelude by getting single place settings as low as $16.75 apiece. A place setting consists of six lustrous pieces. A luncheon knife and fork, salad fork, butter spreader, teaspoon, and cream soup spoon. Every piece beautifully wrought, exquisitely detailed. And there are other payment plans just as practical and easy, which your silverware dealer will be delighted to explain to you. So tomorrow, Monday, go wherever the very best in silverware is sold and look at complete sets of this magnificent solid silver. Ask for the pattern by name. The pattern Prelude, spelled P-R-E-L-U-D-E. Prelude, acclaimed the most radiant of, of International Sterling's new creations. Once again, as our host and director, Conrad Nick. Thank you, John. As is customary, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to ask our star to step out in front of the silver curtain to greet you in person. All right, Joan? Thank you, Conrad. And thank you, everyone. Thank you, Joan, for a magnificent performance. We hope you'll be with us again next season. Assisting Miss Crawford today were John Heaston, who played Bill, Carlton Cadell, who portrayed the role of Henry Crane, and Lindsay McCary, who was heard as Father Malone. Miss Crawford will soon be seen in the new Metro Golden Mayor production, The Women. Next Sunday at the same time, Silver Theater stars Douglas Fairbanks Jr. in a romantic story which we know you'll enjoy. Be sure to listen. All names and designations of persons and of places used in the course of this broadcast are entirely fictitious, and no actual place and no living person is thereby actually referred to or designated. Silver Theater originates at Columbia Square in Hollywood. John Conti speaking. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.